So Lion Heat Art. What kind of artist have I become and what is this work? What, what have I done with it? So looking at my mind map, what I wanted to create as an artist and the qualities that I wanted in this work were to be intimate, insightful, evocative, provocative, reassuring, disorientating, beautiful, generous, funny, deep, immersive, complimentary, paradoxical. I wanted to explore this notion of windows being portals or frames and as light sources that we use in our lives so often and something that have become very significant to me in my recent life looking out of windows I wanted to explore this theme further to see what I could see through them and to find out whether more than meets the eye great phrase more than meets the eye is there something that more than meets the eye out of this project well I think there is because qualities that have come out of it for me is the depth that's there is we're all a bit of a mystery even to ourselves I mean that's quite something for most people the mystery seems to be themselves to think about themselves in that way so in a way that's quite profound and, and good enough as an open text to leave it like that. Okay, so when I set off to do II, uh, what seems like a long time ago now, what I wanted to explore was this concept that the eyes are the windows to the soul. That's quite an esoteric phrase really. So I wasn't expecting to explore it in any literal sense because this piece is a slightly surreal, dardaist, associative montage, effectively, the main piece. And this piece, the documentary, is intended to just be outside the room as a little taster to draw people into the room or something to watch if they wanted to see something on the way out, having been in the main room. The main piece is going to be something like a 40-minute loop and this documentary at the moment needs a hell of a lot of editing to cut it down to something that someone might sit there and watch for maybe 10 minutes. So the question is what's the story? The documentary needs to tell a story, not just be a, a reporting of a string of recordings. And I don't really know what the story is still yet, I'm still making it. Uh, but one of the stories that's come out of it that surprised me is I've realised that all of the people I've asked are from a particular strata of society and that everybody's in, in academia in some way, shape or form pretty much. Either my students, my academic colleagues or my MA colleague students. So I'm holding my hands up here to say that obviously that is not a representative sample of, uh, I'm not claiming it's a research project, let's put it that way, because I would have liked to have had 18 year old lads from <coughs> Whitehawk council estate, I would have liked to have had grannies from the veg market, I would have liked to have had taxi drivers and hotel receptionists and I don't know, lots of different types of people and I, within this project I, I don't have the time to do that and I'm going to have to draw the line on my recordings pretty much in the next couple of days and just edit it. Hmm, 
what's interesting straight away is how much difference it makes whether I can see around the eye or not. Now that suddenly stops being my eye that I even recognise myself when it gets that close and abstract. I quite like that that suddenly it feels like I'm in a different world even with myself looking at that. And in a way getting that close to the camera gets rid of everything else that's distracting me around it. So maybe that's the solution. project called II based on the old phrase that the eye is the window to the soul it seems to have been around for a long time this phrase and it's a play on words so it's about I I and what is that? What is the I around personality and also around soul and spirit and what people might believe about that. Well, one of the things <coughs> that I'm really focusing on within this project also is Walter Murch's theory around eye blinking and so his thing is about in the blink of an eye his great book that I'm reading again at the moment that we blink when we're chunking information it's the way our brain works um, that it's not just about um, making our eyes moisturising our eyes by blinking that there's something going on which is about the way our brain works and the way we chunk information by blinking so there's that going on and there's also about um, the NLP thing about eye, eye accessing cues that when we think about something we're remembering it, we look in a certain way and when we're imagining something or making it up, we look in a different direction. It's partly how lie detectors work. So this close-up of the eye is meant to be something that is about a play with the window to the soul, windows in themselves, and to really get to see something about people that we don't normally see. I've started looking in people's eyes differently straight away. It's amazing how much I think I've looked at people in the eye and I've not really seen their eyes. So it's a different way of looking for me. And it's very hard to get a head to stay perfectly still and keep focus. Um, I feel like I need to invent some kind of medieval head clump. Stories about windows, seeing through windows and frames, light, and <coughs> blink points, noticing blink points, and noticing eye accessing cues and seeing what comes out of that. And then beyond that, there's also what people say, 
about their personality or their soul and how they feel about being asked those questions. And I feel like with all of those elements at play, if you can get the technicalities right, it should be really, really interesting and compelling. Day one of II. Well, with regard to my personality, I think that, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to blink here, um, that um, probably it's an eclipse. I think that's a good word to use. Most of the time it's an eclipse. In fact, I think the older one gets, the more an eclipse it becomes. And uh, what about the song? Uh, I think that's an interesting one. I think it's quite, um, quite an interesting area. It's sort of like plunging into a, a deep pool and um, being surprised what you find. What do I think about doing this? Um, I think it's quite intriguing, except that I am quite ready not to have any bright light shining in my eyes at any moment now. <laughs> They're incredibly fratchy. I think my soul has disappeared. It's still going. Mm. It is interesting how abstract it becomes, though, isn't it? When it's just an eye. I literally don't know if I'd recognise myself. I think my eyes a bit like yours, actually. Mm. No, I had that then when I was just looking through this clip. Mm. Even though we're different coloured eyes, mm. we've become we've become much more similar. Yeah. When you zoom in like that. Just answer in your own time, uh, keeping your head as still as possible. Uh, what you, how would you describe or think about your personality? How would you describe or think about your soul or spirit or what thoughts do you have attached to that? And then just how would you feel about thinking about or answering those questions when you're you ready? Okay. What do I think about my personality? Nearly everybody said that they found it hard, on some level, to answer those questions, which, I mean, they're questions about ourselves. Somebody asking us about ourselves seems to be really difficult, and yeah, that's surprised me. So, do you, do you get anything from watching it back? Like, well, you're going into your mind, aren't you? I suppose I had to see myself to go right well, something quite funny. Okay. Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's the idea is that you think about your personality as something you already know or you've got an opinion about anyway. Mm. And then to think about your soul or spirit, whatever you think about that, as an abstract. Yeah. So you're going to get, you've got to access something else. And then how you feel about all of that is a whole other yeah. thing. So I don't feel like I want to ask any more questions. It feels like that's enough. My soul. I don't know, I've never really thought about my soul. Um, I'm quite free spirited, loving. It probably makes me question what layering I understand of myself. I haven't really dug very deep, dug. <laughs> Sorry. No, um, yeah, it's alright, it's not a test. Um, I don't know. So 
So I think I'm quite a bubbly person. I kind of borderline on confident. Sometimes I'm not so confident, and I don't. I'm quite selfless most of the time. Around time. Um, I think my personality is quite bubbly, um, impulsive sometimes to my own, own de detriment. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm a horrible person, but yeah, I've been quite warm and kind. Um, and I don't know what else to say. I think my personality I think my personality... Oh, I can't do it. You don't have to keep your eyes still, just keep oh, okay. your head still. It's your head that needs to stay in the world. I don't know really. I don't ever really think about it myself, but I do know that my personality does change because I probably am a lot more quieter, like for instance in university, than what I am when I'm with my friends or socially speaking. I can't have it my eyes because my eyes just dot around. And the other thing that's come out of it that has surprised me is that an amazing majority of people seem to have said when they were asked about soul or spirit, I don't think I've got one. It surprised me a little bit how many people I know who come from that place. Um, it's not a place that I come from and I didn't really intend to... people on the spot in that way, like, to ask them to own up about something. I, I'm, I was generally, genuinely curious what people would say. And how was I, how do I feel about being asked to do this? Um, being put on the spot with these kind of questions is difficult um, and I'm sure if I had more time to think about it I'd give you completely different answers um, but it doesn't make me feel uncomfortable I feel like I can answer I answer with the the knowledge I have at, the, at that moment all I can do. And your soul or spirit, any thoughts you have or don't have about that? Any thoughts I have about my soul? Well, as, as you said, uh, like the eyes at the window of my soul. <laughs> so what does that mean to you then? Well, actually, you can, I think that's what you're trying to do, right? To, to see through the people's uh, feelings or to see how, how, how the eye is representing the way we, we are communicating, I guess. My soul and spirit. I don't believe in any soul or spirits of any kind, to be honest. I just believe I'm a piece of meat. The piece was meant to be about what happens with people's eyes when they think about their personality, which they already have some kind of an opinion on. Actually, that seemed to be very difficult for a lot of people. Uh, soul or spirit, I expected it to be abstract and from something to go on with the eye when people were thinking about that. And in some ways, for me, the most interesting response has been the last one. Well, how do people feel about being asked those questions? And I have to admit that I think I've spent a long time in personal development seminars and um, 
shamanic ceremony, all kinds of things where I've got used to spilling the beans really and a lot of people really aren't and so I've got to hold my hands up to that one as well and it wasn't my intention to make people feel awkward for the sake of it I was just curious Yeah, intimacy is a quality that I put down that I wanted to capture, create. And I've been working with this phrase intimacy as into me see for some time. And I think out of all of the things that I put down on my original plan, I've captured that. It feels very intimate and it is around into me see. And well, I just hope you enjoy it. I really, I mean, it's such a cliche, corny thing to say to finish off. And it feels like it's a gift. I wanted it to be a gift to those who watch it. That maybe they come away feeling okay about something. Reassured on some level. I don't really know what that means. That's for you to decide. So, thanks for watching. And I really, really hope you enjoyed it. And, yeah, it's all the great cliches, isn't it? I enjoyed doing it, um, glad it's ended because it's time for it to stop now and I guess this is the start of Lion He Art and I don't know what's going to happen next but um, MA in Digital Media Arts 2012, thank you and goodbye.